Welcome back to CS107. This is week four. The focus of this week is applying the computer science concept conditionals to uh, some apps that you are going to build. So our what we'll be covering in this lecture today is uh, give you a preview of the Creative Soundboard Gallery Walk. It's something you're going to do to check out the Creative Soundboards that your peers made uh, last week. Um, review the computer science last week's concept of conditionals. We'll go over a couple apps that you're going to build this week, the Traffic Light Challenge and the Warrior Slideshow. Um, we'll introduce a new concept, uh, CS concept variables, and we'll go over the homework for week four. So corny joke of the week, uh, how do you find Will Smith in a snowstorm? That's right. You just look for the Fresh Prince. Yeah. Alrighty. As usual, office hours uh, for me, uh, Thursdays 5 to 7, and Section 1, Section 2 meet on Mondays and Wednesdays from 4 to 5. Um, review of the grading. Uh, so the in-class apps that you build are 55% of your grade. The homework is about 40%. includes your weekly survey, and I uh, have moved the emphasis of quizzes and exams down. They're only 5% of the grade. They're, they're really just there to, for some basic accountability. It's not, not meant to be a big part of this class. Um, reiterating, as always, the homework is due on Sunday nights. Not just the homework, but all the assignments for the week are due uh, Sunday nights at 11.59. There's no late homework accepted. Uh, apps are due on Sunday night. If you don't like your grade on an app and you're open to putting a little more time to um, improving it, you can always resubmit uh, during TA office hours for a higher grade. Um, we've got Piazza up and running. Uh, a couple people use it uh, every week. Uh, really easy way to get in touch with me because uh, for better or for worse I'm online uh, most of the day so I, I can immediately get back to your question appreciate if you would put it in Piazza and not well totally fine if you email but if you put it on Piazza there's a good chance someone else has the same question so um, it, it's useful so if you, you wouldn't Piazza it's a good thing alrighty um, so every week I try to do a, a video where I give where I address the feedback from the week um, you know, this is this is a new time in education, and we're we're doing things differently. So it's really important that uh, you know we get a sense, all of us, not just my class, but generally get a sense of what's working and um, what we should change. So your feedback is always really useful, and I try to make that video Monday or Tuesday after I get collect the feedback for the week. You can find it generally on the the overview pages for each unit. Um, Something I just wanted to clarify that I, I feel like is worth understanding is that I'm going to be introducing concepts over the first next couple weeks here. They're sort of foundational CS concepts that you would use in any level of computer science, generally introductory concepts. So what you can expect is that I will introduce a concept and give you the basic understanding of it in a lecture. You'll get a chance to practice the concept, which is what code.org in particular is really good for. You can they have all these lessons set up that are like sort of introduction to the concept and then a week later or so you can expect to apply that concept after you've had a chance to uh, practice it in a app that you build on Funkable. Um, so this is uh, this is important. It's what we, we say a lot of our, what I've been saying, which is the process is, is over the product and you're going to get to experience that pretty much right away this week. Um, and for some perspective, you... Where this is, you know, part of this class is, is is a focus on mobile app development, and it comes back to a like a fundamental sort of engineering concept, which is design process. So it's a it's a way of of thinking about well anything you're developing, but it absolutely applies to apps in a sense that it's something I've emphasized things are things are never really done there. You you iterate, and that means that you take a version of something, you try to improve it, and you you go through this sort of this, this continuous process. So a basic way to think of design process is that discover step is essentially empathizing with the user, thinking about what the user's needs are. You're ideating, so you're taking your problem, you're considering the user's needs and needs, and you're coming up with different ways you can address it. You put together a prototype where you can, uh, it's not like a, necessarily the, the perfect version of the version for market, but it's, an, it's a version that you can show to somebody and they can get a, a pretty good idea of what would happen if you you had all the resources to make a finished version and you then you share and you, you can share it so that you can get feedback and reflect on the process uh, like sort of identify different learnings and then it's sort of this, this process where you would then do it again so you now have these learnings about how people experienced your product and you would go go ahead with applying those and so in this this iterative design process um, 
the steps in a little more detail. So the, the, the discover process of a design process, empathizing with the user. Um, we did not do that in our first app. We kind of skipped that step. So I, I gave you the parameters of, of what was needed, uh, but you did do some ideating and, uh, through brainstorming and planning on your planning doc. You built, uh, you prototyped, you built the version of your app. And this week, or part of this week's activities will be to share your app where you'll be able to get feedback on what works and then some feedback on what can be changed or improved. Um, and, and as I've emphasized, the apps on your phone currently are never a complete product. You're always getting updates. They're always trying to be improved. Um, so what are the grading in this class? It's meant to reflect that where um, I guess when you submit and you, you get the feedback and you get your grade, uh, you, you are getting, you're getting feedback and you're hopefully the, hopefully it's clear on some things that you can improve. And, and I, have this policy that you can resubmit for a higher grade because that's that's the idea. You're supposed to get some feedback. You identify some things. You apply it back to your app, and then you 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 would continue in that process. So as the grading is reflective in this class, it, I like to think that it's reflective of the design process. Um, so this is what you're gonna do. The first activity this week is a virtual gallery walk. So you'll navigate to the Padlet for your session uh, section. The, the links are on Canvas. You'll click on an app uh, that that you're classmates have posted there and it should take you to their project page um, some of the project pages it, it it's hit or miss but some are dynamic you can just test in the project page other you'll have to make a copy and then you can open the test test the app the way you would normally um, the goal or what I'd like to see is that you give feedback on at least three apps um, so we're looking for you to give some pluses so some things that you appreciated or enjoyed about the app and, and feel free to also give wishes. So I note, note some things, some bugs or suggestions on what could be better. And something that I've been emphasizing about feedback is that effective feedback is specific. So you're identifying what works or, or what doesn't, and it's actionable. So you, you know, you, you've got something that you, you think could be improved, give an action step. Give, give a like clear suggestion on, on what could be changed in a, in a meaningful way. So let's actually move over to the, so a, an example, so this is section one. You see that there's a bunch of apps here. You could click on any of them, and it should take you to the project page. And you might be able to play it just here in the project page. Well, play most of it in the project page, uh, or you might have to copy the project and open it. I think you can also see inside. So there's, there's a bunch of different ways uh, you can go about checking that out. Alrighty, so that's the first activity this week. You get a chance to give some give feedback to uh, some some of your peers on their projects. Um, so the next thing we'll do a quick review of this idea of conditionals. So you introduced it last week. You played with it in the homework on code.org, and this this week you're actually going to apply the concept of conditionals to a couple apps. So to review a conditional, another phrase or way to describe it, conditional is an if if else statement. So uh, the basic if statement, uh, or in, well, anyway, basic if statement, if it's raining outside, then you need an umbrella. If the traffic, start is, traffic light is red, then you can stop or else continue. And so this is an example of conditionals allowing programs to make decisions in some sort of organized way. So it, it allows essentially a computer to, to choose between two paths or, or your program. So if something is true, you take one path. Uh, if something is false, perhaps you take another path. It's represented in sort of flow chart uh, on the on the screen here. Um, some basic if statements. If it's raining is true, then you probably need an umbrella. If you're hungry, then you should eat. If traffic light is red, then you must stop. If else, so a more complicated conditional. Uh, if it is a weekday, you need to wake up at eight. Else, you can sleep in. If my clothes are dirty, you need to wash them, or else uh, don't need to wash them. I guess. If the traffic light is red, then you need to stop, or else you should probably go forward. Alrighty. So your first app this week is the traffic light, and essentially the traffic light challenge. There'll be a single button in the middle of the screen, and when you press the button, it should click between should should go between green, uh, green, yellow, red. Uh, and so you're going to use a conditional to check what color it currently is, and that will allow the program to make a decision about what color it should switch the background to next. Uh, some notes. There's no template for this. You're just going to build it from scratch, um, and it's a. I, I just to show you. It's it, you're applying the concept of conditional. Uh, it's pretty simple, um, and I, if I gave you a video, it would just give everything away. So it needs to be a little bit of challenge in terms of building this. So there's no there's no video tutorial, and it's a four part app. I want you to stop after part two. You're going to go to um, you're going to go back onto Canvas, and I have a 
a challenge for you. I want you to try to, uh, I want you to figure out some code and you'll, you'll give some, some, your ideas of what, what, what's going on with this code and why you think that's happening. So the first part is pretty straightforward. You'll just drag out a button, which you'll call the color button, change the text. And in the blocks, it should be really easy. When the color button is pressed, you'll set the background color to green. That's part one. In part two, you'll, uh, you'll need a conditional. Uh, in fact, you'll need a specific conditional. So you'll take the basic conditional here, you'll click on the rotary, and you'll have to pull out this else to connect it together. And it'll end up looking like this. It's an if, if do else block. You're also going to need a, an equals block, which you find in the logic drawer. And so you'll check if the background color is green, then you'll do something, or else you should do something else. So that's part two. And after part two, you're going to come back to Canvas. Um, and I want you to take a look at some code. So I've given you this piece of code here. And I want you to think about what would happen if this code was executed. So uh, this, this code is, is sort of written in sequence. There's one event, obviously, the button is clicked. And I want you to think about what happens when this, this change color button is pressed. I want you to identify so what, hap what will happen, so what will be the result of it, and try to explain why you think it happens. So I'm, I'm not concerned about you getting the perfect answer. I do want you to think about it. I'll give credit just for participation in this one. But... Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of essential to understanding how conditionals work and why we use them. Alrighty, the last part of this app, you'll program, whereas before it just went from green to red, I want you to be able to program from green to yellow, from yellow to red and red to green. And you're going to need an if, else, if, else conditional. So there's three parts to it. So you'll find a, your conditional, it'll look like this. I think you may have to just start with the if, if do. But you'll have to put out, you'll have to add an if, an else if and an else, so it should look like this right here, and that's how you'll you'll build in a conditional to check and move between the traffic light colors. So that's your first app. That's the traffic light challenge. The second app you're going to build is the if else slideshow, otherwise known as the warrior slideshow, and you'll build a user interface here. You'll need a label that'll name it the warrior slideshow. You'll add a button which will switch between images in your slideshow, and you'll actually have the image which will start off with Steph Curry. Um, there is a template for this one, uh, but so while there is a template that will have all the media that you need, this also does not uh, have a video component. So you'll build you'll, the challenge, of course, to build a pretty simple user interface and then do the basic coding yourself. So part one is just uh, getting the user interface built. And part two, uh, you'll program uh, the image to to rotate between Steph and. Uh, Steph Curry and Clay Thompson. So when the next button is pressed, uh, change the image from Steph to Clay or from Clay to Steph. You'll need an if else block to do the same type of logic where you'll check to see which image is uh, which image it's set to. And depending on which image it's set to, it should change to a different image. Uh, you'll move on to part three where you'll add Draymond in the mix and you'll need an if else if else block to do that. In part four, you'll the final app will have uh, Steph Clay, Draymond, and Andrew Wiggins, a recent addition to the team. So you'll, you'll program it in such a way. You can do that with an if, uh, else if, else if, else block. So you'll, good luck on that. Um, okay, so a new concept that we'll be dealing with this week is the concept of variables. Um, and so you'll, once again, be on code.org. I'm going to spare you this intro video because it's on the code.org lesson uh, that you'll go to. Um, but... So we'll introduce this concept. I'll, I'll tell you a little more about it. So a variable, very simply, is information that can change, or it's sort of a placeholder for a piece of information. Um, a, some terms that you're going to want to understand is the idea of initializing a variable. So this is what a variable looks like in Thunkable. So initialize is how you set the variable to its starting value. So you initialize it. Uh, I think it always says app. So initialize the variable, and you'll you'll have to name it within this area. So you'll give a name to your app or your variable, your very common names are score or time, and you'll set it to an initial score or time. Um, there's some protocols for actually naming variables, and I, I'm not going to get it too deep into it here, but it's a concept called camel case. And what happens is in variables, there's never a, like an actual space. And the way that you differentiate between two words in a variable name is even though they're tied together here, the first word is always lowercase, and every word after that in a variable name starts with an uppercase letter, letter and that's why we call it camel case. So it's like the humps of a camel. camel. And so I'm not going to be too uh, 
uh, fussy about that one, but it's something you should know and will be expected at the higher levels like CS110. Um, so back to this idea of variables being information that can change. There's a specific uh, block. It's Sorry, it's down here in the corner here. And this block allows you to use the variable in your code. So it's the app score. And you can pull that into a variety of different spaces to use it. Uh, in this case, you have you've, we've initialized the app score to five. This block down here is what allows you to use that. So to say set uh, you know a label that shows the score or using it in some other fashion, you just simply pull out this block, and that block is equivalent to the value of whatever the variable is. In this case, it's equivalent to five. Um, you can change the value of your variable. There's actually two blocks here that will allow you to do that. So you can set it to a new, once it's initialized, you can set it to a, a different value. And it also kind of, like, well, this neat feature will we'll, we'll directly change uh, the value. So there's kind of a more traditional, complex, more complex way of changing the value of the variable for if it's like a numerical value. Um, and uh, I'm going to skip that because it's unnecessary and applicable because you have this really useful uh, block here, which is change the app score by one. Alrighty. Uh, quick, quick ideas around a variable. You'll notice that there's some differences here. So if the initialized score of the variable is 10, uh, then the um, if you want to change, so say we had a, a button that changed the, the score of the variable. So we, we start off the variable is equal to 10, but if every time we click this button, so if it starts at 10, you'll see that this this pattern uh, where we can get the get the value of it, and we can add 5 to it. So we're going to set the value to whatever the current value is, plus 5. So the first time you click the plus button, it would be 15, 20, 25, and so on. Um, and so another thing I'll just point out if we're, we're taking a look at some code, the difference between these two um, very simply is every time that you click the, the value here, it, it sets it to 5. So anytime the plus button is clicked in this case, it just be it sets the variable by 5. Whereas here, you're adding 5 to whatever the current value is. So you're setting the, the value of the global, the global variable dot size to get the global variable dot size value plus five. So there, this sets it to five, this increases it by five. Alrighty, so homework this week will be on code.org uh, and I'll put a little video up on uh, Canvas of how to navigate to that specific lesson. It's a little tricky, but if, you, if you've made it this far, you've figured it out yourself, it's a little triangle at the top. And the lessons that I want you to do this week are lessons 19 and 21. They specifically focus on variables. Um, your task for the week or to complete the virtual gallery walk, give at least three pieces of feedback to uh, three different, check out three different apps, give feedback uh, to someone in your, to three different people in your section. Uh, the only links are on Canvas for, will be on Canvas for your, to, to get back to the Padlet. The two apps you're building this week are Traffic Light and the Warrior Slideshow. The homework is on code.org. And as always, the it's expected, uh, I really appreciate it if you would spend some time and, and give me some feedback on the week four survey. And with that, um, thank you so much. Have a great week and good luck.